everybody. Okay. Welcome. This is the Real Estate Investing Mastery Podcast, and this is a special show. Rick, you're live. Every like millions and millions of people are watching you right now. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> Tri trillions of people are watching you right now. No pressure. <laughs> uh, guys, this is my good friend Rick Hine. And uh, this is a special podcast. I don't know if I've ever done one like this before. I'm wearing the nerdy, goofy-looking headphones, and Rick is wearing the cool Mac <laughs> earbuds. And uh, so, but this is a going to be a different little show. It won't take long. Uh, I'm big on technology. I I love all the newest, coolest, greatest little gadgets. And Rick is kind of the same, but he keeps things really, really, really simple. And that's one of the keys to his success. Um, and we're going to talk about Evernote and how he uses Evernote as a CRM, as a tool to manage his leads and to manage his deals and his contracts. Um, so, Rick, welcome to the Real Estate Investing Mastery Podcast. Hey, thanks, Joe, for having me. <laughs> this is um, – we've been friends for how long now? A couple, uh, couple, couple years, yeah. Couple years. It's going on two years. Um. Give a little background of yourself, would you? How did you get started in real estate and what about uh, it? Gee, and yeah, please, basically, please, please don't talk about the corn huskers. Nobody <laughs> cares. <laughs> Nobody cares, Rick. Well, it is basketball season. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. My, my background uh, for most of my adult life is full-time ministry. And so uh, up until about three years ago, that changed. We were part of a new church plant here in the St. Louis area. We ended up having to shut that down. I was looking for work and uh, actually saw an ad on uh, Craigslist that Joe had advertised he was looking for an administrative assistant. I thought, I can do that. We did a phone interview. Joe did not give me the job. <laughs> and so in the midst of the interview, I said, hey, what do you do? And he said, well, I'm a real estate investor and I've got a podcast. So I started listening to his podcast and I thought, I could do this. And uh, so I started my own LLC and then uh, started heading down that road, even though I wasn't making too much progress because I was doing some other uh, part time jobs, trying to scrape together enough for my wife and I to live on. And then. Um, not too long after that, a few months later, Joe, uh, I was following him on Facebook. He advertised that he was going to uh, look be interviewing for acquisitions manager. I had no idea what that was. Uh, I told Joe, we were emailing back and forth a little bit. I said, look, the least you can do is give me a cup of coffee. Give me a few minutes of your time since you turned down my, my, my role for the administrative assistant. So he kindly agreed. He interviewed me and end up getting the job. So Joe basically taught me the ropes in terms of how to wholesale and how to do it. So he handled the marketing side of it. I did the other side of that and we did that for a few months together and I ended up going on my own and have been with my own company now since uh, probably about mid-December of 13. And how so- many, uh, How many deals uh, would you say that we did together, Rick? We did probably we were headed upwards of 20, 20 to 25, and that was from like August through mid-December of, of uh, just that little time. So I remember, yeah, it was, it was good. I remember one of the things I, I talked you with you about was the importance of finding your buyers. And yeah. we we really took that. I I was in the middle of. Um, working with my own coach at the time and like, how can I create a, how can I do more deals and how can I, I wanted to create like a turnkey business, but I didn't want all the hassle of a turnkey business. Right. And I didn't right. want a ton of employees. And, and, and he just reminded me of something that like I'd heard a hundred times before I'd even taught people this stuff before, but he said, number one, go out and find a bunch of buyers. Duh. Okay. Go and find a bunch of buyers that are looking to buy properties. And uh, so that's what we started doing. We started sending yeah. letters and postcards. Do you remember? Um, yeah. one, of the, yeah. one of the things that we did was we sent out letters to people who were to cash buyers who were buying properties in other turnkey markets. And that is uh, maybe I shouldn't be giving our secrets away, <laughs> but that's what we do on I, this show. That's yeah, there you go. So, but you know, we started getting people to call us. And Rick, the reason I liked working with Rick so much is because he's such a down-to-earth people person, and and 
cares more about doing the right thing and taking care of our clients than making money. I mean, I, I really think honestly that's where Chris, uh, that's where Rick's heart is at. And um, so it was great. And we started doing deals and it just turned out to be, you know, this right time. Listen, um, I give Rick a hard time. I say, listen, I taught you everything you know. I didn't teach you everything I know. So watch out. <laughs> you but, know, the, the interesting thing about we had this one guy yeah. who uh, ended up buying a, a lot of homes uh, from Joe and I. And, and anyway, to make a long story short, I mean, in, when it was all said and done, he invested millions in St. Louis. And he had, when he actually came to St. Louis to, to, to meet with uh, me and property manager, he made the comment, he said, you know, I tried to invest in St. Louis previously a couple of years ago. And I said, really, what happened? He said, I couldn't get anybody to return my phone call. Oh, and so I just thought, you are kidding me. So and, and, it was interesting. And I was probably one of those guys. <laughs> you may have been. <laughs> I probably was because you just get busy and, you know, you, you know what you're yeah. supposed to do. But yeah. it just goes to show you who is our real customer, Rick? Well, I mean, I, oh, the real customer is yeah. for me. Our, it's the uh, the buyer. The buyer for me yeah. is the most important person that I deal with. If I don't have a good trusting relationship, I don't know if I. So there, when I think of customer service, I think more of the buyer because yeah. that relationship for me is paramount. Because if they're if I'm not making sure their needs are met and they're happy with the service that I'm providing them, then I've got I've got nothing. I know a lot of the guys focus on the sellers. Mm -hmm. I tend to focus on the buyers. It's just kind of my niche. So I tend to work with the out of state guys and I like to be viewed as their man on, on you know, on the ground here in St. Louis. So. Which is really, really, really important. And, and I'm so glad that Rick came into my business and my world the same time I started thinking the same thing because I had before been seller, 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 seller marketing, mm -hmm. find the leads, find the leads, and then the buyers will come. And that works. But the, if you look about who is our real customer, our customer is the one who has the money, right? The sellers yeah. don't have the money, all right? Yeah. It's the buyers have the money. Yeah. And so Rick has really kind of risen to in St. Louis is known all around real estate circles as being the guy with the money. And people, how many, you get deals, leads coming to you all the time. What One of the things that we did, and I know this has nothing to do with Evernote, but it, you know, it kind of does. Um, we started getting buyers. We started finding out, you know, how much money do they have, how, what kind of properties are they looking for, what are their numbers, and then we just started spreading the word, hey, yeah. you know, we've got, we got money, we're looking for deals, send us what you have, and it, we really didn't have to do much marketing anymore, uh -uh. seller marketing, because uh -uh. Rick was getting so many leads just from referrals and other wholesalers and realtors and agents, saying, hey, here's a property, see, you know, is your, would your buyer be interested, and they were happy just to make. A little right. bit, little bit piece of the pie. So yeah. I think that if anything we get out of this, everybody listening is is take take your buyers very, very seriously and treat them like gold. And yeah. they they are your customer. Would you you want to add anything to that, Rick? Am I? Yeah, no, I would completely agree with that because especially with the out of state buyers, they don't have anybody else in town to go to. And if you can become that go to guy and you can earn their trust over a long period of time. Then you're 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 it's it's just going to bode well for you. And Joe's right. I most of my leads I get through other wholesalers as a result of, as a result of networking. And these are guys that I know they're not taking me to the cleaners in terms of markup and things like that. And typically, when my buyers when they're in buying mode and sometimes they're on and off, but when they're in buying mode. I get their best leads because they know I'm going to sell them for them. So I tell them what my criteria is. They, I let them know. I send out a weekly, sometimes by once every two weeks, but most time weekly email. I've got a list of about 30 wholesalers that I uh, network with, and so about once a week they know what my criteria is, and so they get, they they send me their leads. I work together with them, and uh, it works out pretty well. So how how many deals in the last year, Rick? Would you say you've wholesaled, or what's an average month for you? Well, I just had a guy from California come out. Uh, it was an out-of-state guy. He likes to see his property, so he comes out like once or twice a year. And he bought four from me last week. Okay. So typically, uh, I don't. I'm you know I'm trying to think. I think last year I sold uh, a little over a hundred. I think <laughs> something like that last year. So yeah, it was 
pretty incredible. Score! Yeah, How awesome was, uh, is that? Yeah, it's. I would have never. I mean, I. You, you know, I mean, I was basically after we shut down the church, I was unemployed, and to think that, oh, you know, I'm. Geez. I mean, I didn't know anything about real estate. Literally, just don't, didn't know anything. And so, even some of the very first homes that I bought, those first two or three, I kind of. Uh, you know, kind of cringe over those because I've learned a lot. The guy, the <laughs> Let's guy was talk about those. Manager. Yeah, the guy who was our property manager really has worked with me well, and and I've asked a lot of questions, so he's taught me a lot. And and then just being around the business, other wholesalers, how do you do this? What do you do in this situation? I just ask a lot of questions, so I you know, continue to do. Because I'm just so. Nervous. I I am so stink. I mean, I look to you as a as a friend, Rick. But I I hope it's okay to say this to a friend. But I'm so stinking proud of you, like. No, oh, yeah. that, I appreciate that, Joe. Because you know you're you're almost like a you're this real mature guy, and here I am. I still feel like a twenty year old, um, <laughs> and I, I know I look twenty. I'm just, but it's so cool to see, <laughs> like, see Rick just take this and run with it, and does over a hundred deals in the last twelve months. I, I think one of the things that I made a decision once I got went down this road with you, I, I thought. I'm not going to try this out. This is a career and it's either I'm, I have to make it this work because I wasn't interested in just, well, let's see if it works. And, and so, I mean, I've taken more risks in the last two years than I would have ever dreamed. But now we've bought, um, my wife and I, the business has bought, uh, we owned a duplex previously, but now we bought another property and we're going to buy, I mean, our goal is to probably in the next, oh, two or three years buy a total of 10 and so, you know, we'll have our own portfolio as well. And so you're when you're wholesaling, great. you can you can wait on the really good deals. Yeah. And so you can because they're out there. So it, it, it works really well. And so it still gives you the freedom to help in the ministry when you want mm -hmm. to, right? So yeah. you're still involved yeah. in ministry as well? Uh -huh. I'm part of the leadership team at our church and so I'm involved there and, and that sort of thing. So yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um well who cares about Evernote? <laughs> <laughs> This is so cool. I'm so excited because um, I remember meeting with Rick and I remember Rick, you, you telling me, Joe, these offers are too ridiculously low. Nobody <laughs> will take these. This is crazy. Why on earth would I want to offer such a ridiculously low price on this house? Nobody will take it. Yeah. Do you remember those conversations? Oh yeah, I do. I remember a lot of them. I just thought, you know, how are we going to do this? I just, I just, I couldn't see the big picture. I just knew what, what you know what we were trying to do, and I thought, how does this work? And it wasn't until we Joe. The good thing about Joe is, I mean, obviously he's he's he, he's trustworthy, he's honest, so it's easy to deal with him. He's got he's a systems guy. I'm a systems guy, so we worked really well together. And once we had our systems in place and we were going, it 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 really became I wouldn't say easy, but it 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 it, it, it flowed pretty smoothly. And we both like Max. Yep, yep, sure do. But you're a corn husker. That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I give him a hard time about Nebraska. How can you not? Corn yeah, guy? well. <laughs> I was, you know, go ahead. I, I was going to say I was in um, Colorado and I saw this corn husker shop. Yeah. What store? That's near uh, Rocky Mountain National Estes Park. Park. Estes, Park. Yeah, Estes Park. Yeah. You go to Estes Park in the middle of Colorado, and there's this storefront right in the middle of this tourist area that's yeah. that has a bunch of big giant red ends everywhere. And I think You're of Mark. we go there often. Okay. Anyway, Rick. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for um. No problem. Talking to me about that. <laughs> uh, I, I'm just I, again, guys. I keep on going back to this whole strategy of. Find the buyers. Who are your customers? They're the buyers. They're the ones who have the money, right? And start networking. Start marketing to buyers, finding out what they want, and then answer the phones. Um, if, yeah. if Rick understood that very early on, I think a lot of it you got from just being in ministry, understanding the importance right. of and even And even with your wholesalers, when your wholesaler gives you a lead, you need to if, typically, if you don't like it, they, they never hear back from him. At least give them the courtesy to respond to the wholesaler. Then you're actually building the trusting relationship with your wholesalers as well, and they know that you're not going to leave them hanging. So right. it, it works on both ends there too. And by the way, Rick, remind me at the end, uh, anybody listening, we have listeners to this podcast in over 150 countries. It blows me away. 
Um, but yeah. remind me at the end, maybe you can give your email or your website for people to yeah. go to or do it right now, actually. But, you know, you're you still have you have more inventory than you do buyers right now. Or do you have more buyers than you have inventory? What? I, it's it's pretty even right now. I don't typically maintain inventory, so I find out what my buyers are looking for. Because typically, what a guy does, I, I say typically, a wholesaler will he maybe he'll have a website, he'll put a bunch of properties on the website. They may or may most of them wouldn't apply to what their buyers if they have specific buyers what they're looking for. So what I do is I find exactly what my buyers are looking. I get the word out to the wholesalers as well as in that market, you know, specifically in that direction. And then my leads are geared towards them. And so, for example, I've got another guy. He's coming out from California. He came, he's coming into town today. I'm going to be with him tomorrow. And I've got like five homes that are right down his alley that I'm going to show him tomorrow. So, um, so basically, you just let me know what you need. I can get you the leads and get them at the price you want. If I can't, I'll tell you I can't. And if I know someone who does, I'll, I'll point you in that direction. It's not a problem. So. It works yeah. out pretty easy. The, the, my website is, it's real easy. It's uh, investwithintegrity.cc. And that's, it's okay. www.investwithintegrity.cc. And my email address is rick at investwithintegrity.cc. Good. We'll put those in the show notes. But again, investwithintegrity.cc. St. Right. Louis is a great market. A lot of really, really good cash flow producing properties yeah. here in St. Louis. St. The great thing about St. Louis, it's very stable. You don't see the huge ups and downs. You got good, yeah. steady cash flow, good, steady appreciation. And um, Rick is in St. Louis. Do you hear the uh, the alarms? I do. The sirens? sirens. Or tornado warning or something? I don't know. That's we'll find bizarre. out. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> we could be weird. live like in a tornado <laughs> yeah. recording this. Um, so anyway, uh, there's a, the, St. Louis is a great cash flow market. You get good solid rents. Prices are still really cheap. I mean, you can get pretty easily anywhere from 12 to 15 percent cash on cash or return on investment on your money, considering property management, vacancies, repairs, and maintenance. So when when you go to Rick and you tell him I want 13 percent on my money, I want 13 percent ROI on my properties. Um, he'll do that. And the other thing that Rick brings to the table is relationships with really good property managers, really good right. contractors, and a team in here that can manage your properties well. And then Rick is available to answer the phone. So if you're looking for good cash flow rentals, um, give Rick a call. Go to his website. Um, and I wholesale a lot of our deals to Rick sometimes too. So um, yep, everybody cool. wins. Cool. Yeah. Well, Rick, um, before this siren, you figure out what this siren is for. <laughs> what we should do about it. Um, let's talk about Evernote because believe it or not, a lot of people use Evernote as a CRM, um, as a way to track your leads, manage your leads, and to keep track of your contracts once you get a property under contract. So would you mind sharing a little bit about Evernote? We, I see your screen here. Okay, great. Uh, the, um, tell us what you have here. What is this? Yeah, basically Evernote is a uh, software format, and it formats on three different uh, levels. It, your desktop, which is what we've got here and you're looking at, it also will format on uh, online. So you can, if you have web access anywhere, you can, you've got an account there, and also uh, mobile devices, so iPad, iPhone, whatever it is. And so anytime you make a change in any of those formats, it, it records that change yeah. to all of them. So it's, it's a great deal. This particular, I use Evernote. I've used it for a number of years now. Basically, I've gone paperless with it, so I do all my personal finances here, all my bank statements are in here, everything like that. So what you'll see here, you can set it up a different way. These little squares here are notebooks. Uh -huh. These are all the notebooks that I've created in Evernote. Uh, the main one here is this real estate stack. Now, some people do it differently. Uh, you can tag things. Some people like to only have like one or two main notebooks, and then they differentiate things based on tags. Right. I'm a guy who likes to see everything. So here's my real estate stack. And so here's – these are properties that were sold to this company called AC, sold in April, sold in, in, in December, sold in February. So I can look at these notes and say, okay, I sold 12 in February, sold 12 here in, in January 14th. Oh, so each two. note in the notebook is a, a property, right? Correct. Correct. I'll just pull this up. Here's the properties. Here's this particular property. And I'll show you what I do with this, what all this information is. But I put everything. There's my assignment contract. 
there's the contract for sale, there's a property report that I put in here. Everything that I get goes in here. Settlement statement, there's the HUD, all this stuff, I put it all in here. And so if I ever want to do a search, let's go back here. So now let's type in, so I said, where is that? that it's a, on Coppinger somewhere, and there it is right there, boom, there it is, I've got all the information. And you can, uh, you can take pictures with your phone. So if I've got my mobile phone, say even when I'm out and I have a receipt, say I take a client to lunch or something like that, once I take them to lunch, then I'll pull up uh, in my business notebook, uh, I'll pull up expenses, 2015 expenses, put the cursor where it needs to be, take a picture of the receipt, boom, it goes in there, and then I can throw the receipt away and I don't have to worry yeah, about it. So nice. I've got it there for tax purposes. Now they even stuff. have so, with Evernote, when you're on your phone, you can take a picture like, with the document photo. Is that what you do as well? Yes, you it's can do a doc document photo, yeah. So it'll crop yeah. off the everything outside yeah. of the paper. Yeah, it's great. It, you don't have, it's not like a regular photo, it's a, it just records the document. Okay. This, I'll show you what I've got here. These are my, the, you can create shortcuts. Over here on the left-hand side, you see this where my cursor is, shortcuts. These are, you can put any notebook you want into your shortcut thing. So you can take them out, you can put them in. So for example, this is New Leads uh, shortcut here. This particular notebook is probably the one I use the most. And you'll see what I've got here is I've got a template. When I get low, I use this template for all my new leads. So for example, oh, this lead came in uh, just the other day. And so I just start filling in the numbers. I get on, you know, I, the lead comes to me. These are the price. There's the rent value. I use Rentometer. Joe got me stuck on that. Use Rentometer, median value. Uh, I'll get property management company, go in there. They'll give me a rent, initial rent uh, repair estimate. I get this from Zillow. I get the taxes from the county website. It's vacant. If I have a, if I've got pictures, like for example, here's a property. I've got pictures in Dropbox. I just put the link in there. And so it's really easy. So then what happens is when I get a, so say like this property, I'm, I'm now I want to be careful here because there's names here, but anyway, I, I've I've pitched this property to various to various um, uh, buyers. So what I'll do, they'll say, hey, do you have something like this? I say, well, listen, I've got something. Here's a three bed, uh, one and a half bath, and so what I'll I'll just copy and paste this. I won't give them the lockbox. I'll copy and paste uh -huh. that into an email. They get all this info. They can look at it, and then if they're interested, I'll give them the lockbox and go from there. So it just it makes it easy. So, so the, the, the rewind a little bit to the this is the new lead template. So correct. This is uh, kind of what you what you um, go ahead and scroll down well, a little bit. And by the way, um, can you would you mind if people go to my website, I can give them the the this template that they could use in their own Evernote. No, that'd, that'd be, be great. Okay? Yeah, that'd, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, and then they can change it up any way they want. So, so you, you I, take this and copy it and paste it into a new note when um, a new lead comes in, right? So, like for example, this is my template. I just do two finger touch, copy to notebook, and it'll say what notebook, and I'm going to do it in new leads. There it is, and boom, it's up there at the top. Ah, okay. So I don't have to copy and paste this whole thing. I just do two finger touch. Then now it's going to do copy to new leads again. Okay. I'll do it. Now I've got two templates. Nice. So whenever I get a new lead, I just go there and I enter the address here. Here's my home address. Uh, so now there, and then I just start filling things in. And okay. so once I get filled in, my lead source, whoever sent me the lead, if it's me, I'll just put my own name in there. Uh, title company we're going to use once you once you get it under contract and you do it. Email. So once I've gotten that far, then these the rest of this stuff is basically reminders. I need so every time once we identify our title company, uh, e once I email my contract to a seller, I check that, and you can create these things up here. Here's a yeah. text box right here, right there. Okay. So it's really easy. So once, and then I say, okay, did I get my contract back? Yes, I did. And then if if we need a copy of the current lease, and, and then I'll, I'll, I'll check that. So if it's occupied, I got it back. If it's vacant, then I need an occupancy inspection. If it's rent ready, if it's not, I just don't worry about it. But these are things that are, that over you know the last two years, I use. You just put, you can create your own template and it's really, really easy. 
And so, so this you know, is basically so a checklist of like the first exactly. part of this note is the deal information, the information about the right. seller, where the lead came from, the right. address of the property, right. et cetera. Right. And then below that would be once you're interested in this and you want to wholesale this property to one of your buyers, this tracks everything after that. And you're using the check boxes, which is at the top of the note there in one of the right next to right. the bullets. Um, right. You can uh, you can do either numbers or bullets right. or check mark boxes. Yep. yep. And you do the check mark boxes because you can just check those off and you can see that it's done. Yep. Right? Now I know where I'm at. Now the other thing I do is say, for example, I'm going to pitch this one to Joe McCall. So I'm going to pitch in my home. I'll put the the date on. So on three three fifteen, I pitch this to Joe. So let's say Joe uh, says, Hey Rick, I'm not interested. So I'm going to put a note, not interested. And I'll put the date because usually then that means there's an email and I can find the email if I go look for it. So I pitched it to Joe. If it was a set price, then I'll put the price. So I'll know because sometimes depending on your buyers, you may pitch at different prices. So I make sure that I keep, you know, I, I've got all my information straight there. And so then I know who I pitched it to, what they said, what was their reply, all that kind of stuff. So once, go ahead. I was just going to ask, will you talk about attachments? Maybe you can do that later, mm -hmm. but yeah. when you attach things, it's, it attaches it right in the middle of your checklist, right? So do you have to go to the bottom yeah. to attach things? You can, you can you, wherever you want to put it, wherever your cursor is, it'll attach. So, okay. So if, if you don't want so to interrupt your checklist with a bunch of PDFs and attachments, you can just do it the at the bottom. bottom. Okay. All right. So then you, you go up here to this paper clip, and then there's my thing. So let's say here's a... Oh, here's a here's a here's a an ebook that I how to shave ten hours off your work week by Michael Hyatt. So we're just going to attach. I mean, that has nothing to do with this, but right. it just attaches right in there. So okay. I'll just go ahead and delete that. So that makes it easy. Now here's where things get simple. So let's say let's say I've got my home here, and so let's say Joe did buy it. So he's say he he's gonna I'll say um, wants the house. So now it's no longer a new lead. Now it's pending because now I'm going to get it under contract. So I sent Joe a contract. He's he uh, sent me a contract back. Uh, if I did an assignment, I do that. Sometimes I do assignments. Sometimes I don't. But let's say I got it under contract. And so once now it's pending, I'm going to drag this into my pending file right there. And so now so that's my the notebook. File. You're dragging it out of the active exactly. new leads notebook into yep. the pending notebook. Yep. And you can, you don't need, and the way you can move it to any notebook you want, see it up here where it says pending, uh -huh. that's your notebook. And now I can put it in any notebook I want right there. And you could also do tags if you wanted. If I wanted to do tags, I could do tags. So like, for example, let's do, uh, so this is, uh, this is my personal home. So I'll say home. Uh, I don't have, but I just do that. Or I'll put Joe McCall. I've got a tag for Joe. And so, Anytime I want to do a search for Joe, I just do a search up there and this would come up. The other thing Evernote does, anytime you have a document, any PDF, even a handwritten note, it will scan. Anytime you do a search, it'll scan all the words in that handwritten note and in the PDF and it'll pull it up. So like, for example, I'm a big, I've got an electric smoker. I smoke meat. So let's do, let's do uh, poultry. So. All these, so you have poultry, all these recipes here have poultry, the word poultry uh -huh. in them somewhere. Uh -huh. And they're going to show you where it is. So so if I want a chicken recipe, I want to grill something, then I can just pull it up like that. So I keep an Evernote. <laughs> I use it all the time. Whenever I barbecue on my grill, I have an Evernote. When I bought the grill, it came with a really mm -hmm. good cooking guide. Weber came mm -hmm. has this really good cooking guide, like how long you cook your beef, your, your chicken, right. your fish, and all that. And so right. I took a picture of that and put it into Evernote. And sure yeah. enough, every time I can never remember, every time yeah. I um, need to barbecue something, I open up Evernote. I do a search for Weber. And yeah. sure enough, there it comes with the image of the yeah. cooking time chart. Yeah. I'll do it. Go ahead. I, I like how you use tags. You could also use tags maybe if you wanted for like a motivation bucket, right? So you could yeah. have a tag for – hot motivated seller, warm, cold, yep. and then you can filter out. You can say, show me all of the leads that have the hot tag on it, right? Correct. Correct. 
yeah. You can you can tag anything any way you want it, so it works out really really easy. Okay. So I'll show you something else. So like for example, I told you about this uh, uh, thing I do with wholesalers. So here's my note. This is weekly emails that go to wholesalers. So this was the email the week of February 22nd. This is the email I just emailed out yesterday. And so this one was just a short one. Hey, this is what I'm looking for. And so I, usually what I do is I just take these, I've got like four buyers here looking for specific things. I'll just copy and paste this and change it a little bit, but I do all of that. Uh, and I use, and Joe taught me this one, is a really good, you can do mail merge in Google Drive. And so I use Google Drive to do my mail merge to my wholesalers. And what you're talking about is a service called, it's free, it's a it's an add-on you add to Google yeah. Spreadsheet called Yet yeah. Another Mail Merge. So yeah. if you go to YouTube and do a search for Yet Another Mail Merge, you'll see videos on how to do that. It's really simple. So you can send emails yeah. from your Gmail account from your Google Spreadsheet where you keep right. your buyers. All right, so that's an email you send out reminding other wholesalers and investors out there in St. Louis, right. hey, I'm looking for these deals. Correct. And I've got, I keep uh, a list of cash buyers in here as well. Don't show Another us. thing Don't show us. I'm not going to. <laughs> right. Another thing that I do is I've got this folder called RE services. Let me see. You know what? Let me do it this way. Uh, you can do a search here. There it is. This is a notebook and I've got, I'm a part of a, I'm actually, I'm, I'm part of a, uh, I get the, for an REI uh, group here in town, I get their emails and people all the time are saying, Hey, who do you have? That's a good roofer. Do you have yeah. a good plumber? Yeah. Well, when those go out, I keep all that stuff. Uh -huh. So I, I just, here's, this is a, a notebook and these are individual notes in there. So these are plumbers that I would use cleaning services, house cleanouts, uh, you know, all this kind of stuff. I do, I just keep it all in Evernote. So if I ever need it, it's all it's all there. So nice. It, it's it's a great it's a great tool, and I'd, it'd be on my cell phone. It'd be on my iPad, wherever I'm out and about. I just pull this up, and and it works out really well. Really Do you well. guys understand the power of this? I mean, you how many times right. has it been where you have a um, you need somebody's asking you about hey, do you know any painters? And you're just yeah. going to Evernote and look for the no, for the the note. So you you have a note for each different major trade. Uh, right. for housing and, and you can see all the plumbers yeah. that people have recommended in the past yeah. and um, that's fantastic that's really good yeah. okay so um, go back to your new template and let's let's look at that the the um, the rest of your checklist there you have you know email right. contract to the seller email uh -huh. assignment so, contract to investor go ahead right and then I'll say email contract the title company. If it's copied, make sure you say something about the – if it's occupied, excuse me, make sure you say something about rent credits because it just takes one or two times when you forget to get yeah. – forget to tell the title company, oh, by the way, this is rented and we're ready to close the next day, and they haven't issued rent credits. So I put that note in there. And then what I do, I just go ahead and do this. I just uh, – I just copy and paste this. If it's an assignment, I copy and paste this part right there, right to the title company. So it attaches my sales contract and the assignment of that contract too. And it's got the name of this particular, I'll take that out, to this particular company that I was assigning to. Uh, for the above property, the property is currently vacant slash occupied. And I'll, I'll do that. Yeah. So once I, so then I check that. Once it all closes, then I'll email the property manager and this guy, Dwight, he's a good friend of mine who does insurance. So he handles the insurance for a lot of my investors. I'll email him this note right here. I said, here's the info on a home. We just got under contract. Dwight property report is attached for your convenience. And I do the address, purchase date, title company. Yeah. And so even, this is before we close, I guess. So this is, but it gives them when the close date is the value, blah, blah, blah. And that's everything the insurance needs, the title company needs. So, or not sorry, not title company, property management company. So then they're ready to go by the time we close. They've already, because they're going to change the locks as soon as it closes. They're going to put a lock box on. They're going to change the locks. They're going to do all that stuff. So they've got to be good to go. They've got to deal with the, uh, you know, the utility companies. So yeah. they, I want to make sure they've got everything heads up. 
before we even get to that point. The cool thing about this, again, because Rick's on the road a lot looking at properties, and he gets a phone call, Hey, and it's the title company or the property management company or his inspector that says, hey, you know, remember that house at 123 Raymond? Well, he's going to – what? He can just pull up his Evernote real quick and right. pull up, and he sees on one screen all the information in there. That's really, really helpful. Um, so if you were to go down a few lines, you'd start entering attachments to this lead, right? You would start right. attaching. What, what are some of the attachments that you would attach? Anything that pertains to this house. So like, for example, here is, oh, let's do, here's a house that is a, an assignment contract. So here's the contract. There's the assignment. Here's the property report. Uh, I put it all in here. Once it closes, I've got the HUD in here. I've got the warranty copy of the warranty deed. If I'm a part of that because I'm assigning it, I, I'm not a part of that. But if I was double closing, I'd have any. I, I'd have all of that information in here. So anything that pertains to this house, I put it in here and I make sure it's in this file. And then it's so then I don't have to go around looking for it in another place. It's here. Um, people are asking probably about this property report that you have. It's from realestatetools.com, right? Is it only Mac that, that lets you do that report? You know, I don't, I, that's a good question, Joe. I don't know. It's, uh, the name, it's, uh, property, what, what, the name of the actual thing is property evaluator. Right. Is the name of the software. And it's, I think it's free. And so it's, it's, well, it's, it's not, <laughs> yeah. oh, okay. but it's real cheap. Sorry. Like, 25, yeah, 50 real, bucks. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but it's it's worth it because you can add your pictures in here and uh, it, it ends up looking really nice and it looks really professional. And, and it, I, my investors then know, because when I give them like here on this particular thing, okay, the cash, uh, cash on cash return, their ROI on this one is amazing, 21.2%. Yeah. So they know, a lot of times you get leads and somebody will say, oh yeah, it's a 20% you know, return on investment. I thought, right, tell me. And so what they don't take into account is all this other stuff like, for example, vacancy rate, 10%, yeah. you know, all this kind of stuff, which we take into account. Joe taught me all this stuff and it's extremely helpful. Was it Insurance, 10% 10, 10 property management, repairs, Taxes, that's, uh, this isn't, it says percentage, but actually it's not. I go to the county website and find out what the taxes are and all that kind of stuff. So I make sure that this stuff, that, that the ROI that I give my investors is a true ROI. That's so and important. Not, and and, and I remember also right. talking a lot about this with you, Rick, was um, you always need to uh, underestimate over deliver, yeah. right? Yeah. So if you're, when, when you're putting together these reports to send to your cash buyers, um, don't estimate on the high side. If you know of a price range, the rent range is going to be 700 to 750. Use 700, right? Yeah. If you know that the vacancies are going to be, you know, eight to 10 percent, use 10 percent. Use the the more conservative numbers. And so it's important when you're giving ROIs or cash on cash return estimates to your to your investors, you're covering things like closing costs and estimated repairs, uh, maintenance, vacancies, taxes, titles, insurance. Um, maintenance, stuff like that, right? So yeah. this kind of a report yeah. is really, really helpful. And if you are, um, if you don't have a Mac, there's other services that will offer that. And in fact, let me open up my, Never my Evernote here mm -hmm. because I just saw one last night. Um, I just was, let me go here. Um, last night I was on a, was reading somebody's email. Here it is. And there's this, Somebody mentioned this website that does property reports, and uh, it's called Really Yields, I think. Hold on one second here. Hmm. Um, I don't know if you can see my – well, you can't see my screen. We're all looking at yours. This website is called – okay, realyields.com, R-E-A-L. You might want to look at this, Rick, because it might even be better than what you're using. R E A L Y I E L D S dot com. Real yields dot com. And the cool thing about this is it'll give you property flyers for your properties that give you the cash flow and the performers and things like that. Wow. And, That's um, great. but anyway, I like how you have the PDF because that will, that kind of helps with seeing, um, you can email that. 
to folks. Right. They have something they yes. can print. It looks really professional. Yep. It looks nice. Yep. Realyields.com. Okay. Good. Nice. Um, okay. One more thing. You, how do you set up reminders to, if you yep. want to remind yourself in a week to call this seller back or this buyer back, what do you do there? Right. Typically you can, you go up here, like for example, let's say here I've got a new lead. So let's use, let's use the one we just did. Uh, we put it in pending. So let's say it's a, let's say it's a new lead though. And I want to remind myself, I go up there at a date. And so I will click that and I'll say, okay, next week I'm going to at eight o'clock, I can change the time to whatever time I want. Let's say nine o'clock in the morning and it will send me a reminder that I'll just click that and I'll get a reminder and never know it'll be a notification. Now, different people do different ways. I typically use a to-do list in a different software. And so, but the cool thing about this is you can take this, so say for example, I'm gonna do a double click here and I can say copy note link so now basically what I've done, and I'll show you, I can't go into it. I'll go into my, uh, oh, I'll just do it down here. I'll go into my, my to-do list, my yeah. daily reminder list, and I'll say, hey, call Joe on this date, and I'll copy and paste this. That link. And so, yeah, so that's the link to this note. Now let me do this. Let me just, let me do this differently. Let me put it in another, let's just put it here. Here's a property that my guy is going to buy. And so we'll put the link here. And so when I go to click this, watch what happens. It takes me, boom, right to the note. Right. I use that a lot, so, actually. Sometimes, yeah. like if I um, I have some notes. I, I did this recently for an um, event I was speaking at. I had my notes for my presentation in Evernote. And all I did was like, there's a button up there on the upper right, share. You pull the uh, right. drop down, and it'll give you a public link that you can mm -hmm. share that note with copy public link right there. Yeah. And um, it, you can then send that link to people and they can see your notes. They can't edit them. So it's just like yeah. a read only uh, yeah. view and they don't have yeah. to have Evernote. It takes them right to a, a yeah. web page, right? Uh -huh. and, if, and if you've got, if you've got a, uh, a partner that you're working with, you can share this note. And so you can share this note with them. And so, uh, they can make changes, you make changes, it all records it, and so it, it works out. Now they've just come out with a work chat, yeah, so you so. can actually chat at the same time, going back and forth, just like a regular uh, iMessage chat or something like that. Now, can so. can you share a notebook with somebody? Uh huh. Yeah, you can. So, for example, I'll go to notebooks. Here's a. Oh, let's just do. Uh, see, I've got a Huskers notebook there, Jay. Yeah, share that share one. That. Sure. Okay, here we go. See, double click, share notebook. There we go. Joe McCall. There we go. Let's do this one. And so I'll send it. So Joe now has access, which I'm sure he's happy about, to my to my Huskers notebook. And once he accepts that, this red thing. <laughs> I'm not going to give you any chance to edit it. I'm going to remove it really quick. <laughs> so. This red group thing will show up, so that's that's a shared notebook. That means it's shared yeah. with someone. So that's kind of how that works. That is really cool. And again, guys, yeah. this is not something that just sits on your computer. You can set it up where it synchronizes with the cloud, as it were. Yeah. But it's still secure. Yeah. In fact, I have it set up with my iPhone that if somebody were to get my iPhone and go into my Evernote, they have to put in a code. So yeah. I've I have coded my Evernote. Uh, with a four-digit PIN number yeah. that yeah. So people can't can't just get it because I have so much valuable information in my Evernote. Yeah. Um, but this has been really really helpful. So let me just clarify uh, real quick. Then when when a lead when you put something in Evernote, it 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 resides on your computer, right? So if you were to go right. into wherever this is held on your hard drive, you'd see right. probably a really big Evernote folder with all your right. stuff. But it synchronizes with the cloud, and it happens mm -hmm. in the background. So when you're on your iPad or your iPhone or your Android or on the library, the public library, like I'll go on my wife's computer sometimes, okay. and I need to get into my Evernote. I'll just go to Evernote.com, yep. and I can log in to my Evernote account and see on the browser all of my notes that are on my other computer. Does that make sense? 
It's just absolutely amazing. Um, and you can use this for so many different things. Keep notes of sermons when you're at church or to, just as a diary, as a, as a journal. And um, it's really, really easy to f- make flex. And the other cool thing that you can do, I don't know if you have this turned on, Rick, but you can actually geolocate your, your notes as well, oh, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, you can. So wherever you create a note, it'll locate to that. I know some people use it like when they go uh, to say they're, they're at a big event and they park their car somewhere. They'll take a picture of their car. It's got a geolocation on it. So then you go and you got a you know quarter of a million people at you know at a big park. And after you say where did I park, you That's just pull funny. up the Evernote and it'll take you right there. I've never thought yeah. of doing that. I need yeah. to. <laughs> the cool thing about Evernote, it'll be whatever you need it to be. Mm-hmm. And so this is how I use it. For every ten guys who use it, they use it ten different ways. And so you yeah. just have to create. But you, the good thing is you can create whatever you want to out of it. And, and I would say subscribe to the blog. Because you get a, a daily email, which is basically tips and kind of tricks, shortcuts. Uh, it'll teach you, you know, I'm, I remember the first time I saw Joe on a, uh, an Excel spreadsheet. It was just like warp speed. I, just, I have no idea what you just did last minute. You did about 50 different things, and I missed it all. So, I mean, a lot of people, you know, it just takes time to learn it. But if you subscribe to the blog, You'll get the, uh, you know, you'll get daily reminders, and you can always unsubscribe if you get tired of them. Now you have the premium version, right? I do. It's forty-five bucks a year. It's well it's, worth it's, it. It is very well worth it. You can do the yeah. basic stuff with the free version, but I'd really recommend getting the premium version. Yeah. And listen, you know, I'm a big Podio guy. I use Podio to manage all my leads. I love it. I think it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. But coming in at a close second is Evernote because Evernote is just everywhere. And it's it's really simple. It's easy to use, um, and it's 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 great. Here's the point: whatever you're using, you need to make sure that you've got it set up where nothing falls through the cracks. Rick has got yeah. this set up where there's a checklist for everything. He gets he reminds himself when a um, when a deal is supposed to close, or reminds himself when he's supposed to call a buyer or a seller back. He has different folders for new leads, pending leads, closed leads, and I'm sure you have a folder for dead leads too, right? Dead yep. deals you can throw in there. Yep, sure and then mm-hmm. once it's closed, it goes into that other folder for closed. So you can organize it any way you want. And I think for a lot of folks, oh, I just lost you. Yeah, here we go. For a lot of folks, this kind of may be a breath of fresh air for you because um, you may look at Podio or you may look at FreedomSoft or the other softwares that's out there and just like, oh, this is freaking out, freaking me out. I can't handle this. Um, this is a great little tool. And I'll say one more thing and we'll end here. I mean, if you just go to YouTube, I did this the other day. You go to YouTube and do a search for Evernote CRM and you'll find a hundred videos in there on how wow. people use Podio. I mean, I'm sorry, how people use Evernote as a CRM. And if this is something you want more information about, go to this little website that not too many people know about called YouTube. Do a search for Evernote as a CRM or Evernote CRM, and you'll find a hundred videos in there and some really good stuff on how people use what Rick does. But I think this is going to be a really popular podcast, Rick, and good. I sure appreciate you taking the time to show us this stuff. And Good. Thanks for asking me, Joe. I appreciate it. So, again, give us your website again, Rick, if people want to yeah. – Join your buyers um, list. It, yeah, please do. It's investwithintegrity.cc, investwithintegrity.cc. And my email address is rick at investwithintegrity.cc. Excellent. Hear from you. You good, good, good. So one more thing I'll say again, uh, go to the show notes. If you want this template that Rick has, go to the show notes and you can download the, the template with the checklist and uh, it's yours for free. We're not charging anything for that. So go to realestateinvestingmastery.com. Look up the show notes. Just look up the search box, Rick, and you'll find this podcast. And you go into the show notes and and click a button, and there'll be a place where you can download the same exact template that Rick is using. And I'll I'll even throw in some of the the YouTube video links that I I found when I'm doing that. Hey, thanks, Rick. Take care. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye.